All right, let's dive into a really fascinating physics puzzle today. It's a story that starts with a pretty simple experiment, but believe me, it ends up questioning the very stories we tell ourselves about how reality even works. It's a tale about Einstein, a brand new test of his ideas, and a major clash of scientific interpretations. So you've probably seen headlines just like this one popping up lately. They're super provocative, right? They're catchy, and they immediately make you think, wait, how could one of the greatest scientific minds ever be wrong again? Well, it all comes from a new experiment at MIT that decided to revisit one of his most famous thought experiments. And that's really the big question we're tackling here. What did this experiment actually find? Why does it look like it flies in the face of what Einstein thought? And maybe the most important question of all, is the official conclusion the only way to look at these results? Because what we're going to find out is, the answer might have more to do with the story you choose to tell than the actual physics itself. Okay, so to really get what all the fuss is about, we gotta rewind a bit. We need to go back to one of the weirdest, most famous experiments in all of science, the double slit experiment, and what Einstein himself had to say about its totally bizarre implications. See, for Einstein, it was all about the physical reality of it. His logic was pretty straightforward. He argued that if a photon, a particle of light, goes through a slit, it has to give that slit a tiny, tiny push, you know, a recoil. So he thought, if you could just build a gadget sensitive enough to measure that little nudge, you'd know which path the photon took. And here's the crucial part. He was convinced this purely physical interaction shouldn't magically make the wave pattern just disappear. So let's flash forward to today. Researchers at MIT came up with this incredibly precise modern version of Einstein's idea. Instead of old school physical slits cut into a piece of metal, they used this amazing grid or lattice made of about 30,000 lithium atoms. They cooled them down to almost absolute zero and held them perfectly still using a laser trap. This whole setup let them control the slits, the atoms themselves, with a precision that's just mind boggling. So what did this incredible experiment actually find? Let's take a look at the result that sparked all those headlines and the official story that the researchers are telling about it. And here it is, the core finding in a nutshell. On the left, with that laser trap turned on, the atoms are all locked rigidly in place. And what do we get? A beautiful crystal clear interference pattern. But then look at the right. The moment they turn the trap off, letting the atoms move freely, poof, the pattern is completely gone. The million dollar question of course is, why? Why does that happen? Okay, so here's the official story from the research team. It all comes down to this idea called witch path information. They say that when those atoms are free to move, their recoil acts like a tiny little recording. It records which path a photon took. And here's their big conclusion. The mere existence of that information, whether we actually look at it or not, is what actively reaches in and destroys the quantum interference. That's the whole information kills interference story. But is that the only way to see it? Is that the end of the story? Not even close. This is where things get really interesting. Physicist Sabine Hassenfelder came in with a really sharp critique of this interpretation, and it adds a fantastic new layer to our whole mystery. And her take on this is just brilliant. She has a ton of respect for the experiment itself. I mean, it's a technical masterpiece. Her entire criticism is about the story they're telling about the result. She basically argues that the logic they use to explain why the interference disappears is fundamentally circular. Okay, so let's walk through her argument. Step one, the researchers see the interference pattern go away. Simple observation. Step two, from that observation, they infer that which path information must have been collected by the atoms. Notice they don't actually measure this information directly. And then step three, they conclude that this information they just inferred is what caused the pattern to disappear. You see the problem? It's like saying the car stopped because I pressed the brakes and I know I pressed the brakes because the car stopped. The conclusion is already baked into the premise. So what's her alternative? Well, it's way simpler. And honestly, a lot more like something Einstein himself would have said. She suggests that when the atoms are free to move, those little photon recoils just cause the whole grid to get a bit jumbled up, a little irregular. And guess what? An irregular grid just can't produce a clean interference pattern. There's no need for some abstract concept like information. It's just straightforward physical cause and effect. So now we've got these two competing stories for the exact same result. And this is where we get to bring in a third way of looking at the whole problem through a radically new lens called the Harmonic Scale Framework, or HSF for short. HSF basically says, hey, let's flip this whole thing on its head. Forget about thinking of the world as made of tiny little billiard balls. Instead, 
Imagine the universe is like an ocean of overlapping waves, or what HSF calls channels. In this view, what we call a particle, like a photon, isn't a solid little thing at all. It's just a stable, repeating pattern, a knot of energy, kind of like the focus vibration you see on a plucked guitar string. It's a resonance, not a rock. Okay, so how does this apply to our experiment? Let's stick with that music analogy. HSF says we need to think about three main wave patterns, or three notes. First, you have the photon note, that's the K2 channel. Then you have the lattice note, which is the collective vibration of all 30,000 atoms, that's the K3 channel. Now, the interference pattern that we see, that's like a beautiful harmony that gets created when those two notes are perfectly in sync. The magic word here is coherence. When the waves are in sync, you get harmony. When they're out of sync, all you get is noise. So, can this whole wave-based idea actually explain what they saw in the lab? Can it settle the debate between the information story and the physical jiggling story? Let's see. Okay, check this out. Here's how HSF sees it. On the left, with the trap on, that atomic lattice is held totally rigid. It's like a perfectly tuned, solid instrument. So the photon note comes in, hits it, and the harmony, our interference pattern, is perfectly maintained. But now, look at the right. When the trap is off, the lattice becomes flexible, dynamic, more like a sponge than a solid bell. Now it can actually absorb the timing and rhythm of the photon's wave, what physicists call its phase. By storing this rhythmic information, the lattice itself gets knocked out of tune with all the other incoming photons. The harmony is broken, the interference vanishes. See, it's not some abstract information that's killing it, it's a physical detuning of the whole system. And here's the really cool part. This explanation lines up perfectly with Einstein's physical intuition. It's the real physical interaction with the lattice that's doing the work. And it also lines up perfectly with Sabine's critique. It totally avoids that circular logic about information and instead points to a concrete physical cause, a change in the wave structure of the environment itself. So where does all this leave us? What's the big takeaway here? Well, we have one experiment, one physical result, but three very, very different stories to explain it. And that really highlights something crucial about how science works. Let's just put them all on the table, side by side. You had Einstein, who focused on the reality of that physical recoil. You have the MIT researchers, who brought in the abstract concept of information. Then you have Sabine Hassenfelder, who pointed out the logical flaw and argued for a simpler physical cause. And finally, the HSF framework comes in and offers a detailed physical mechanism, phase storage and wave channels, that seems to beautifully unify the valid points from everyone else. And all of this really leaves us with one final, kind of profound question, doesn't it? This entire journey started with a simple physical observation. An interference pattern vanished. But as we've just seen, the meaning of that observation depends entirely on the framework, the story that you use to explain it. It really makes you wonder, in our search to understand reality, is the narrative we build just as critical as the data we collect?